Uh, welcome back. Hopefully you've now got fed and are able for a full afternoon worth of uh, more lectures and more breakouts. I'm going to go over the solutions to breakout number two, which uh, hopefully you all know the answers, but this will make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, so I've got a file here with the solutions in it, and I've also got a notebook. So I'm going to walk us through the file quickly, because this is what's going to be posted, this is what you can see. And then I'll show you, step you through it uh, line by line in the notebook. We can work out the solutions together. Uh, so first we just, up here, import the airports and the flights information, the dictionary, and then the list of tuples. And then for the first answer, it's just a simple sort. And that'll sort your data uh, by, air, uh, by airline name. And then down here is the more complicated nested loops, which will allow us to do uh, the sorting by the departure time. And so instead of just dissecting the code there, let's do it in the notebook. So first I'll load up the data. And then I'll show you how we do that first question. It's just calling a sort. And then here is the print. So when we print for the nice formatting, We'll put 53 dashes, and then we'll print them uh, element by element within the flights tuples. And uh, if it's sorted properly, it'll print it out as expected. And you can see uh, the A's and then the S's and then the U's come down. And also, you might notice that, for example, in Southwest, uh, the airline and the flight number, they are contained within the same string. Well, they are contained in the same tuple element within the flights list. And so, for example, Southwest 145 comes after Southwest 59. And this isn't by coincidence. I, I think sort is actually looking into the tuples and seeing what the second element is and then ordering. If the first elements match on the tuples, they'll then order by the second element as well. And it'll go down the list all the way through. Question about the column formatting. Oh, sure. Yeah, so for the column formatting, uh, special character slash t, we'll put in tabs. And that's how I make sure that all of the destinations and all of the gates and all of the times line up on new columns when they're printed. And sometimes you have to play around a little bit with this. Uh, there are ways, for example, we could have had the times uh, lined up on the decimal point so that the 11 would have been a little bit to the left. And you could have done things like that with other, other methods, but that's not too important to go in right now. So then the next thing, the next part, the actual meat of the breakout was how do we sort this list of departing flights not based on that first element of the tuples, but on the fourth element, which is the departure time. And it's really easy to do if you know how to do lambda functions, or uh, I'll show you at the end of this notebook um, a little built-in uh, function that will also help us with sort. But if you didn't and you just know what you know from today's morning session, this is how you could go through it. So we're going to create this new list, uh, which is essentially uh, going to be populated with the tuples from flights, only we're going to order them based on time. So we're going to make it first, and we'll call it, in fact, we can just show what this will be. Hello. There we go. So right now, all we're doing is we're populating time ordered with the first tuple from flights. And that's because we can't start with zero with the scheme that we're using. And then we're going to case it out for each of the remaining flights left in our flights list. So we've put in the first one, and then for the, for the next one, for F in, let's say, it's, it's flights two here, is what, well, flights one is what we're looking at, but the second flight data, we would then case it out, does it belong at the beginning? based on its time, or does it belong at the end, or is it somewhere in the middle? And then we insert it either at the beginning here, at the end we append it, or we figure out in another for loop where in time ordered it belongs, if it belongs somewhere in the middle of time ordered. And then we can insert it into that location. So through this nested for loop and these cases, we can go through and force it to recreate the flights list as time ordered, and this time it's ordered by the departure times. And just to show you, we can run it and then print it with the same printing procedure. And here we are. We see that it's all by the time. Yeah? Are the, when you put it down right, like the 
Yes, yeah, I'll post it on the website as soon as I get down. Uh, if, you wanted, if you wanted to, I guess, do your own research and be a little bit advanced, you can use the operator uh, item getter function. And so if you look at flight, if you look at sort for a list, it's got a couple of optional arguments, and one of them is a key. And if you read up into that, and especially through IPython, it's easy to see these types of uh, documentation. And you can learn how to use uh, this key operator. And so you can do all that we had to do with this nested for loop up here, you can do in one line just by calling a smarter version of sort. And then when you do that, you'll get the exact same answer. It's just that the whole sorting operation is now done here. So that's something to keep in mind if you ever actually encounter this again. Don't do this nested for loop thing. Just use built-in operator item getter. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, I think, so in IPython, if you type something and then you do question mark and return, it'll give you the documentation. So, we'll see kind of yeah. how to get at things we don't know how to do within IPython um, in Paul's lecture, yeah. which is after this next one. Um, yeah, and the, the, I guess the point is, and we'll see tomorrow how to do this without having to do this report statement. We'll see it when we, as we with Lambda functions. Lambda functions. And there's actually another way that you could do it knowing only what you guys saw this morning, which is to create a, a new list with tuples in them where you've actually recreated the tuple, but instead of having the time as the last element, you make it the first element and then you just call sort again. Um, so then you don't have to go through all this insert stuff. And just be smart about your printing. Yeah, be smart. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Thank you.